Okay guys, what is going on? I haven't made a video in a little while, but I do want to jump into this because this is a question I've been getting a lot. I know I haven't been doing a whole lot. I've been helping the individuals that really been seeking out help and that's about it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into this video. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I'm always I'm putting out at least one video a week, giving you guys absolutely free content that's gonna help you guys, whether it's long term, short term, just in finance and, and everything like that. So that being said, let's jump back to the video. So you guys see that I have the cues up here. Um, you can also do this for SPY, um, anything really when it comes down to indexes. Um, I have this chart down here, really just SPX, um, which is also the S&P 500. You can do it for it as well. Um, but SPY, you're more likely going to be able to buy because it's a little bit of a lower price. Um, but so what we're looking at, and you can do this with the Bollinger Bands, and this is what I have up here, and you guys can see. I'll show you guys my studies here. Um, okay, it's not going to actually show you guys, but I have Bollinger Bands and I have the implied volatility. So you guys can see down in here, this is the implied volatility. And this is important to me when it comes down to selling options and collecting premium, but that's not really what we're going to cover today, and that's why I had this one. The Bollinger Bands is kind of like the Keltner channel. If any of you guys have ever messed with them, if you guys have not, I would definitely look at them. They both have perks. They I use both of them. It really just depends on the date for me and what I like and what I see and what I feel like in my gut of what's going to happen. But how I use the Bollinger Bands and stuff and the um, Keltner Channel in order to enter into long-term trades. And when I say long-term trades, more of investing in my long-term por long portfolio. And this is something that not a lot of people think about and really worry about, but this is something that... I really didn't like. You guys have heard the point of dollar cost averaging in, which means you're basically just buying every single day a little or every single week when you put money in your 401k or whatever it is. And it's supposed to, over time, you know, make you money. And I'm sure it does. But here's what I do and what I've kind of found that works best for me. Because again, I'm a numbers junkie and I want to be able to get the best entry possible every single time. And of course, you're not going to get the best possible entry every single time, but you can increase your odds of doing this. Now, what I do, and this is very, very simple. You guys know, again, when it came down to COVID or whatever you want to call the virus, the pandemic, everything, this was inedible. This was going to happen either way. You could have done nothing about it. If you look at this, you look at the Keltner channel, it hit the bottom of this no matter what. Um, so there was nothing you could do about this. You just had to figure out, you know, when you felt safe again, buying in when the market was coming back up. And that's what I did. We have a strategy um, that's in. If you guys learn from me, you guys know I have a specific strategy that tells me when to enter for my long term trades. And that's what we do. And so this is also another thing that helps me enter. And when I do this is I always buy at the bottom of this. I'm never buying into these high tops. And I don't I don't ever like doing that. Now, I did sell some of my main thing, and I started buying it back again the other day. So I'm already back in it. It didn't really matter to me. I know how much money I've made and everything else, so it's not going to matter. But what you're basically going to do is wait for it to hit the bottom Bollinger Band. And you're just going to buy when it hits. Now, you may be down for a few days. You may be down for a couple seconds, whatever the case may be. But the odds are, statistically standing, and no, I do not have them in front of me, is in the past, if you go back and let's go to, we're going to change this time frame to, I want to go over the past 20 years. And you can tell over the past 20 years, every time it hits the bottom, it's more than likely to bounce. Now, doesn't mean you're going to hit it perfectly every single time, but you're going to get a better entry. So that's really what I like to focus on is buying the bottom of this Bollinger Band. And you can use the same thing as the Keltner. When it hits the bottom, then you can buy back in. And that's exactly what I've been doing for quite some time. I've been doing it for six years now in my long-term accounts. I don't just automatically buy in on Thursday or Friday when I pay for myself. When I pay myself, I wait. And I can ha I've can. i had up to $50,000 cash 
just sitting in my retirement account waiting to go in and buy more stock, whether it's Apple, whether it's the index is a spy, whether it's, you know, it's something like a QILD that's a little bit more riskier, but it's an income fund that's like a covered call fund. That's something else. If you guys want to look more into that, you're more than welcome to. There's about a million videos of it out there. Um, but this is what I use when I'm – and whether I'm using this right or not or how it's supposed to be made – I don't know because I've never dug, dug into the research of that, but I do know that this works because I've done it time and time again is when it hits the bottom, Bollinger Band, I buy it and then I wait for it to run up. And every time it gets close, I buy and I just let it keep riding. And every time, again, there has been times where I have not bought into the S&P 500, which I do invest into largely, that I did not actually – invest any money for a month or so and does that mean i'm missing out on some gains absolutely but me mentally i would rather know that i'm buying on a red day now there were some times here this year where i bought in at large chunks if it'll quit doing that and it went further down i know for a fact that i've bought some of these and it went further down and then you know a couple of weeks later, maybe a month later, it's popping back up, and I'm positive on that investment when I did invest it in, and then it does go back down. That is part of it. That's why you never buy the tops, and when I say never buy the tops, everybody's like, well, how do you know it's the top? It could just keep running like it does over here and like it's doing currently where it's up at the tops and we're hitting all-time highs today. That is a possibility that you do have. But I'm not saying that I don't want to buy on the tops. I don't care if it's Thursday, Monday, Friday, whenever you're putting money into your 401k or wherever your retirement account, IRA account is. I would rather buy on dips where there's higher implied volatility and the VIX is up. The VIX is the volatility index. For anybody who doesn't know, again, do your research on that as well. But I would rather buy on red days, very red days that are – when the market makes a good move, hits the bottom Bollinger Band or comes near it, I'll buy in with larger chunks and I will let it ride and I never touch it again. And again, you're going to get dividends and all of that off of SPY or the SPX, um, the cubes, whatever you're investing in as long as it does have a dividend. But I'm more worried about my entry into that because, again, SPY and the Qs are not going to pay a high dividend. You're going to have to go buy other things, um, Southern Company, things like that. They're going to have a 4 to 5% dividend yield. Um, with that being said, guys, thank you guys all for watching. I hope this helps somebody and helps somebody understand exactly how I do it. This may not be the perfect way to do it. This is just my two cents and how I understand and how I like to do things because when my positions go red, I do hate it. And I know that there's better odds of that position going green faster if I just wait and buy the bottoms. So with that being said, guys, thank you guys all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.